grateful we are for mama's prayers yes. how grateful we are for the prayers of our mothers my brothers and sisters we're here today because somebody prayed for us Amen. and that lady was mama she prayed for us and in a real way I can still yes, hear mama praying for us anybody here remember family prayer yes. when we used to get up early <laughs> in the morning and gather in the living room or wherever mama said come and we would gather together singing hymns and mama would get on her knees and pray and daddy would too pray for us and we're still here because we hear mama praying praise God for mothers who we celebrate on today we praise God for their lives their love and their legacy that we honor on this day. But then also we thank God for another day that he has granted us to be together in this place to worship him in spirit and in truth. Aren't you glad to be here today? God has given us a beautiful day for us to come together and worship him in spirit and in truth. David said, let everything that has breath do what? Praise the Lord. God our Father, we come to you thanking you for another day you have added to our lives. We thank you, Lord, for this day, which is the Lord's day. But God, we also thank you for another privilege to celebrate the gift of mother whom you've given to us down through the years. And we pray, God, that as we worship you this day and as we honor our mothers today, God, that your presence will fill this house and that all of us will leave here knowing that we have been in the presence of the Lord. We ask all these blessings in Jesus' name. Let us all say it together. Amen. Amen. Let us please stand as we observe our responsive reading. Very familiar passage of scripture, our responsive reading from Proverbs chapter 31. Verses 10 to 31. Proverbs 31, 10 to 31. And we will read this passage responsively. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband shall save and trust in her, so that he shall have no name of scorn. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She is the and the word of her hands. She is like the merchant's ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She rises also wide in the night and giveth me to her household and a portion of her maids. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planteth a vineyard. She spreadeth her to strength, and her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her cradle, her candle, goeth not out by night. She spreadeth her hands to spare, and her hands hold the She stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the smoke of her household, for all of her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he is set in the hell of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it, and delivereth griddles unto all, unto the merchant. Strength and honor her glory, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She will the word of the way of her household, and he will not the word of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also and he praiseth her. And 
favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Let's read together. Give her a fruit of our hands, and let her glory praise her in the gates. Let's remain standing as we turn to our hymnals and turn to hymn number 275 and sing together, Faith of Our Mothers. child or you are a mother who has been one to a child that's not yours we still say happy mother's day amen amen, amen. by way of our announcements we have our regular announcements which are on the back of your bulletin tomorrow morning at 6 30 a.m we hope to get together for a time of prayer and meditation at 6 30 a.m the uh, conference call number and pass codes are there on the back of the program and then on Wednesday we'll come together at uh, 6 30 p.m. for again another time of prayer and meditation and then beginning at 7 p.m. we will have our moment of Bible study. Now the spring and summer clothing drive date has been changed. It has been changed to June the 10th. Uh, June the 10th 
and that will be starting at 12 noon. Now I do know that is the same day of our business meeting and so in start of starting at 11 as we often do for our business meeting we will begin at 10 a.m. and then after the meeting we'll go into our clothing drive. The reason why this change is being made is because on May the 20th, this coming Saturday, May the 20th, will be the funeral of our dear brother, uh, Brother Fortune, Charles Fortune, here at the church. So we're asking all of you, my brothers and sisters, let's all of us come and let's support this family. Brother Fortune has been a member of this church from the beginning. He's been here for many years. He has given much to this church. And so let us come, up, come out on Saturday uh, to support this family. Uh, the funeral and the repast will be held here at the West Hyattsville Baptist Church. And so we're looking for you to come and please share with us on uh, that day, on this coming Saturday. Um, we are, we're asking all of you who serve in various positions to please come and let us celebrate this great life that God has taken from us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Continue to pray for him. Continue to pray for uh, the family in the time of bereavement. Give me my Bible, please. Uh, in the time of bereavement and pray that God will be with them and give them the strength that they will need to make it through these difficult days. I want to thank all of you who came on uh, Friday, who came to support Sister Emma Bunbury and her family. We attended the funeral of Brother Mark Bunbury, um, and uh, we had a good time, but still it was a sad moment, a sad time, because again, Sister Emma and the family have lost a loved one. So please continue to pray for the Bunbury family, and again, I thank all of you who came to help support her in her time of need. I have a card here from Sister Lillian Katusumi. Sister Lillian Katusumi, if you remember a few Months ago, Lillian lost her mother in Uganda, and uh, she went for that funeral. We praise God that she is back safely Amen. with us, but we uh, were with her in prayer and support as she went to celebrate the life of her mother, and she has given a card of appreciation uh, to all of us, uh, which reads, Our entire family appreciates your prayers and support during the loss of our beloved mother, Florence, on March the 3rd, 2023. Above in heaven looking down, we believe she is grateful. And again, it means so much when someone goes out of their way to help others to do something nice like you did. Thank you. And this is from Sister Lillian Katsumi and family. And she says, may God bless you. And Lillian, we're still praying for you and praying that God would be with you in your time of need. For all of you who are worshiping with us by way of Facebook and live stream, we say good morning to you. We pray that God is blessing you on this day. We're glad that you stopped by to worship with us on today. We hope you enjoyed this service today and you are blessed about everything that happens here on this day. And of course, those who are worshiping by way of conference call, we say good morning to you as well. Thank you so much for joining us for worship on today and for you in the house. Good morning, West Hyattsville. Good morning, West Hyattsville. This is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Has God been good to you? Yes. Has God been good to you? Yes. Amen. And while we're here today, let us celebrate God's goodness, not only as we worship him, but also as we celebrate our mothers on this day. At this time, our choir will come and lead us in singing. <laughs>
have come to do, we have come to glorify, to magnify, and we have come to praise the Lord. God is worthy of all our praise, and we have come to praise him on this day. Again, this is Mother's Day, and we're so happy that we have this privilege to celebrate our mothers on this day. God bless you, because again, you are a gift to this world. You are a gift to humankind, uh, because uh, a person doesn't only have to be uh, your child and you can still be a mother to that person and all of us have experienced that kind of motherhood and so we thank you mothers for what you have done on today so to celebrate our mothers today we have a young man who's going to come I told him I would get him I told him I kept telling him man I'm going to get you <laughs> And I finally did, and he agreed to do this. And so let us welcome Brother Herman Bethe as he will come and give us a presentation on celebrating our mother. Let's thank God for Herman as he comes at this time. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Deacons, deaconesses. Um, today I was reminded of how much sometimes we need our mothers, or a lot of times we need our mothers. Um, I was reminded earlier this week, uh, pastor asked me, Herman, uh, I need you to uh, come and speak, and I immediately lost my mind, didn't know what to do. Uh, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna say, it's too short a notice. My wife said, calm down, honey, we're gonna go to God in prayer, and, and, and I'll help you come up with something, and that assurance right there showed me, reminded me about a mother's love. Um, I like to read a poem that my wife helped me pick out. Thank you, honey, I appreciate it. <laughs> it's uh, titled Happy Mother's Day and the author is Anne L. A mother gives her children stepping stones to the stars. Her love is unconditional, her heart has no bars. A mother teaches her children to be confident and bold. Her special love to her children is more valuable than silver and gold. A mother picks up her children and wipes away life's tears. She chases away monsters in the night and silences their fears. A mother celebrates her children's accomplishments in life. She hurts and cries with them when life brings times of strife. A mother shares her love freely with her tender loving way. She grows more beautiful to her children with each passing day. A mother is one of God's greatest gifts to you and me. Her love will remain locked in our hearts and souls for all eternity. Now, I'd like to mention for all the ones who've lost a mother, for the mothers who've lost a child, for the ones who, <clears throat> for the ones who long to be a mother, you are not forgotten this Mother's Day. We thank you, we love you, and you're in our prayers. Happy Mother's Day, and God bless you. Come on, we can do better than that. Give it up for Herman. Amen. Uh, Herman joined, Herman and, and his family uh, joined us uh, last, was it last year? I believe it was last year as members of this church and came right in working. <laughs> Just came in working and he's now serving as an usher. We thank God for the Bethay family, for Stacy and the children and all. God bless all of you for uh, continuously working in God's house because it's all about the Lord. Everything we do gives honor and glory to him. Amen. Amen. Herman mentioned in his presentation that there are some mothers who no longer walk among us. Some were here last year, some were here a year before, or a few years ago. But mama's gone. And that space, that place in your heart can never be 
failed because we know how special mama was and actually how she is <laughs> absolutely because we think of her every day i want us to do something uh, different today because we have we are celebrating the mothers who are here <sighs> but i don't want us to forget mothers who are gone and so if you're here today and you have a mother who has left this world and gone on to glory. I want us to honor that mother. I want us to honor those mothers. And so if you have a mother who has passed away, right where you are, I want you to stand. I want you to stand. If you don't want to, that's fine. You don't have to. And what I want us to do as quickly as we can, wish we had more time, It's one thing to say we're thinking about her, but it's something else to call her name, to put her name in this space. And so I will begin, and as quickly as we can, I'll go from here, choir stand, that side, that side, and then we'll be done. And just call your mother. Or if there is a, a, a woman who was a mother to you, may not have been biological, but she's gone on home, just call her name. And I will begin with my mother, Lucretia Aurelia Rainsbury. Muriel Harvey Davis. Muriel Harvey Davis. Lewis. Marta Taylor. Tommy Benu Kandakai. Adam Asisi. Muriel Harvey Davis. You know. Which is known. Martha George. Lewis George. Continue. Be seated. Come to this side. Sign in front. Um, Mary By calling these names out, we honor them, their lives, their legacy. Thank God that he gave them to us. And now we are who we are because our lives intersected. Our lives were blessed. 
by these cherished mothers. Let us never forget. Let us cherish their memories and let them be a strength of inspiration as we continue to run this road called life. Lord, thank you for our mothers who are now in your presence. Thank you for our mothers who trained us, who taught us, who led us. Thank you for the gift of motherhood that you continue to bestow upon mothers everywhere. Thank you for hearing our prayer and we thank you for this moment in which we can honor and give praise to our loving mothers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, let's see how much time we have. I have a baby dedication I have to do. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we now are going to do something very special. Here today we have a baby dedication to do. Amen. 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 And we thank God for the gift of life that he continues to give to all of us. Amen. And so now I'm going to ask the parents and the godparents of little Aiden to please come forward. Godparents, you as well, family, Turn around. Mm -hmm. L. A I. So today we've come to dedicate El Kufu Rigi. Uh, the parents, Adibayo, it's you, and Michelle. Amen. We want to say welcome to the family and other special friends who are here today and who are maybe joining us by way of live stream and Facebook. We thank you for being here today for this very special occasion. We are dedicating this child to the Lord and praying that she will come to know and serve the Lord all the days of her life. We are dedicating these parents to the Lord and praying that they will be given wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and ability to Raise this child in the word, the will, and the way of the Lord. We are dedicating ourselves as a church family to be the village that helps to raise this child by supporting her parents and providing opportunities for Christian training here at our church. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for Elle. Thank you for the gift of this child. Thank you for giving her not only to her parents, but giving her to this world. We come now asking you to bless this child whom you have given and God to bless us and give us the wisdom that we will need to help these parents to raise her in the way that she should go. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your blessings. 
We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. From the gospel according to Mark, Mark chapter 10, verses 13 to 16, we find these words. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hand upon them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who would not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms and placed his hands upon them and blessed them. Parents, I'm going to ask you a question which will require a response at the end, and I will let you know when to respond. Later. Parents, do you pledge as parents with God's help that you will bring up L in the disciple, in the discipline and instruction of the Lord, making every reasonable effort with patience? love, and grace to build the word of God, the character of Christ, and the joy of the Lord in her life? If so, say, I will. I will. Family, godparents, do you on this day pledge to support this child and her parents in helping them provide wisdom guidance and necessary resources to endure endure that endure this child that makes sure that she is nurtured in a loving home and a loving community if so say i will, I will. congregation will you members of west Hyattsville baptist church be faithful to your calling as members of the body of Christ so that this child will grow up in the knowledge and love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ congregation if you agree say we will, we will. Take the glasses off. Maybe that'll help. <laughs> Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come now to dedicate this child to you. You gave her to Michelle and to her husband, Adibayo. But, Lord, we know that you have given her to us as well. Because every child is a gift. And so now, God, we dedicate her back to you. And pray that you will use her in her life in this world to first bring honor, glory, and praise to you. And then when she is grown, to be able to serve all humanity. Thank you for life. Thank you for grace. Thank you for love. Thank you for the trust you have placed in these parents to care for this child. And so now we leave them and her and the entire family in your care. And pray that you will watch over them, that you will provide for them, that you will lead them along the way. In those moments, God, when they are confused and they have to struggle with decisions, I pray, God, that you will step in and let them know you are right there by their side. And so now we dedicate L 
In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, let us all sit together. Amen. Amen, Amen. Amen everybody. Amen. Amen. Girl, you want to shake my hand? Oh, Lord, have mercy. God bless all of you. you. God bless you. God bless you. And I'll have the uh, certificate for you. Yeah. Many times when I do uh, children or child dedication, uh, sometimes it goes well. Sometimes I get rejected. <laughs> but it's all good. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us come together always to support our parents who are carrying these children. Parenting in the 21st century is a challenge. It's a challenge, but God is able, and God will lead us every step of the way. Congratulations, and we pray God's blessings upon you. Again, we are your church family, and anything we can do to help you along this way, you please let us know. Amen? Amen. As we come to our moment of prayer, uh, we want to, again, remember all those who are sick and sudden. We thank God for answering our prayer, because here in the house today, we see our own Minister of Music, yes, uh, Brother George Anthony Diggs is back in the house. Let's give God some praise for Tony. Amen. Thank you for being here. We praise God for you. Yes, and thank God that he healed you and brought you back to us. As you recall, on last Sunday, Tony was not doing too well. But we're so glad he is here with us on today and that um, uh, he's serving, as you see. And we'll continue to do so. But let us pray for one another, because again, we're living in difficult times. Continue to pray for Sister Emma. Pray that God will be with her in this time of uh, bereavement. Pray for the Fortune family in the death of Brother Charles Fortune. Pray that God will be with him. And even as we come together today, we pray that God will uh, heal them as they prepare to uh, celebrate his life and his legacy here at the West Hyattsville Baptist Church. There are many others who are sick among us that you know of. If you know of someone who asked you to pray for them, if you know of someone who stands in need of prayer, even at this moment, they're not here, but you know who they are. Feel free to stand where you are to represent that person. Or you may have a special prayer request that you may want to give. Feel at this time to stand. You can stand where you are. And as we go to God in prayer, we will remember that person. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank, thank you, Lord. Oh, I just want to thank you. Father, this evening, this, this morning, we come to you with thanksgiving on our hearts, with praise on our lips, thanking you, God, because you've been so good to us. Thank you for bringing us safely through another week and allowing us to be here in this place today. We thank you for this moment of worship when we can come to be filled with your spirit, with your power. Thank you, O oh God, for your presence in this house today as we feel you in our hearts. As we come this morning, O oh God, 
with our praise. We also come with our petitions because there are many among us, O oh Lord, who are sick. Many among us who are going through bereavement. Many among us who are going through difficult circumstances. And at this time, we come asking you, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. As we come this morning, we pray, God, that as we worship you, God, that you will speak to us. Because we don't know what lies ahead of us. We know many things you have brought us through. But God, we are facing another week. We are facing challenges before us. And only you, God, can carry us through what we need to go through. Not only today, but in coming days. And we pray, God, that your grace, your presence, your power will dwell with us as we seek you each day of our lives. We thank you for the West Hyattsville Baptist Church. Thank you, O oh God, for the membership and ministries of this church. We pray you will continue to bless this ministry here in this city, O oh God, that we will continue to preach an uncompromising gospel so that your name will be praised and that people will come to know you in the pardoning of their sins. We ask you, God, to bless this community, bless this state, Bless this entire world. So much trouble happening in the land. But God, you're able, and we know you're able. And so we pray now that you will please have mercy on our troubled land. Please forgive us of our sins. Please have mercy on us, O oh God, for our unrighteousness. I pray, God, that those things we've done that were displeasing in your sight, that God, you will please forgive us. Create within us clean hearts. Renew within us the right spirit. We thank you down for this worship experience. We pray, God, that after we leave here today, that God, we will know that surely we have been in your presence. Thank you, God, for our mothers. Thank you for our mothers who have reared us, who have carried us, who have blessed us down through the years. And now we are who we are because one day mama passed our way. We pray, God, that we will continue to honor them, whether they are here or we're, they're with you. Help us, God, to always be thankful for mother. Bless the word that will go forth today. And pray, God, that this word that will go forth will bless lives and will help those who are trying to make it along the way. Thank you for hearing our prayer. We thank you for the answers you're going to give. And we pray all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 At this time, uh, Reverend James Wright is going to come and read our scripture. And following that scripture would be another selection by our choir. And then I will return with the sermon. Our scripture this morning will be coming from Genesis, the 21st chapter. I'll read for our hearing verses 1 through 14. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. And it reads thusly. And the Lord visited Sarah, as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac 
being eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God have made me to laugh, so that all that hear will laugh with me. And she said, who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children, suck for I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son. For the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir of my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of thy lad, and because of thy bondwoman. And all that Sarah have said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall my seed be called. And also of the son of the bondwoman will I make a nation, because he is thy seed. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. The word of God for God's people.
choir that has blessed our hearts today and remind us why we're here, and that is uh, to magnify the Lord and give him praise. Amen. If, if I were to ask the question how many things you have to give God the praise for, we'd be here until tomorrow. Amen. So we can collectively say praise the Lord. Uh, because God has been good to us. Amen? Amen. 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 I want to thank uh, Reverend Wright for reading our scripture uh, today from Genesis chapter 21. He read from verses 1 to 14. Uh, for the sake of emphasis, I will read uh, verses 8 to 10, Amen. and then we will uh, walk through the rest of the passage. Genesis Chapter 21, verses 8 to 10, but the sermon will come from verses 1 to 20. Amen. The child grew and was weaned. And on the day Isaac was weaned, mm -hmm. Abraham held a great feast. But Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar, the Egyptian, had born to Abraham, was mocking. And she said to Abraham, get rid of that slave woman and her son. For that woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son, Isaac. I want to preach about mercy for mothers in misery. Mercy for mothers in misery. We are blessed today to serve a God who not only makes promises, but keeps every promise he makes. If you read the Bible and you believe that the promises God made to his people, that he is making those promises to you, then you can believe that God will do what he said he would do. Amen. In Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, God said this about himself. He said, God is not human that he should lie. Not a human being that he should change his mind. In Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11, God says this about his word. He said, the word that goeth out of my mouth, it will not return unto me void. But it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Amen. It is this same God the maker and the keeper of promises. Mm -hmm. It is the same God who in Genesis chapter 15 promised Abram that he would have a son. Amen. And then in Genesis 17, as a confirmation of this promise, God changed Abram's name to Abraham, Amen. meaning the father of many nations. When we go to Chapter 18, we hear another confirmation of this child that is to come. But this time, this confirmation is given to Sarah. Sarah hears the promise. And what does Sarah do when she hears the promise? <laughs> she laughs. And you know God sees everything. She was in a tent. She started laughing. And God said, what? Why are you laughing? And you remember what Sarah said? Sarah, oh, no, I, I didn't laugh. God said, oh, you did laugh. 
And then he asked that question in verse 14. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? I will return about this time next year. And Sarah, you will have a son. And so in Genesis chapter 21, the promise here to both Abraham and Sarah, the promise is fulfilled. Sarah gets pregnant. She has a child. Everyone is happy. They're throwing a party. Amen. All is well. But there is someone in this story who cannot be ignored. Her name is Hagar. Hagar was a, a, a slave girl yes, yes. that was given to uh, Abraham and, and to Sarah as a gift. You go back to Genesis 12, you'll see that. She was a foreigner. Amen. She was called a handmaiden, uh, uh, but really she was a servant or a slave. Whatever Sarai, at the time her name was Sarai, at whatever Sarai told Hagar to do, she had to do it because she was a slave. Amen, amen. In Genesis 16, when Sarai could not have children, Sarai came up with a plan because she really wanted Abraham to have a child. And so she suggested to Abram, go and have relationships with my maid, with my slave. Hagar. And the purpose of this arrangement, according to, to Sarah, is that if the Hagar would conceive and have a child for Abram, and then they would have a family. And, and this, this arrangement was actually uh, something that happened uh, in that culture. It wasn't anything strange. Uh, it, it happened in that culture where a, a barren woman uh, would bring another lady and say, go and be with my husband so she can produce a child, but the child will be actually ours. Amen. So guess what? Abraham agreed. In Genesis chapter 16, 3 and 4, it says, so, so after Abraham had been living in, in, in Canaan 10 years, Sarah took her Egyptian slave Hagar and gave her to her husband to be his wife. Amen. Right. Strange thing. The wife goes and get the, the handmaiden or the maid or the servant or her slave and say, here, take this slave as your wife. Amen. Abram slept with Hagar and she became pregnant. And she had a son and he was named Ishmael. So here in Genesis 21, we have two mothers with two sons from the same daddy. Sarah has Isaac. Hagar has Ishmael. But there's only one father. His name is Abraham. Well, one day, Sarah was observing the children playing because by this time, um, Ishmael was a, a teenager, mm -hmm. but Isaac was still young. But, but apparently, she observed Ishmael mocking or teasing or, you know, how children play, Amen. playing with Isaac. And Sarah saw that, and she didn't like it. She didn't like the fact that the boy that uh, Abraham had with Hagar was playing or teasing or mocking her son, Amen. Isaac. And so what she did was she went to Abraham and said to Abraham, she's got to go. Amen. She said to Abraham, that slave girl, who got your son? She's got to leave. And Abraham was distressed about this, but he had to do what 
Sarah said. Amen. And he sent Hagar and her son Ishmael out with food and a little bit of water. So here's Hagar. According to the text, she's wandering in the desert. The desert of Beersheba. The desert. Dry. No water. The desert. Temperatures close to a hundred degrees. The desert. Winds that are so fierce they could throw you off your feet. The desert. She is alone with the boy in the desert. No family support. No child support. Water is gone. Which means that they are thirsty. No water, which means they're about to suffer from dehydration. Can you see her? People are talking about her. Telling everybody she had a child for a married man. She is emotionally drained. She is physically strained. She is mentally devastated. She's in the desert with Ishmael. Can you see her? Can you imagine how she feels? If you can understand how she feels, then you will understand her reaction to this crisis as seen in verses 15 and 16 of chapter 21. It says when the water in the skin, that's a bag, was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes so he can have some shade. Then she went off and sat down a bow shot away, a distance away, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there, she began to cry. She began to sob. The King James says, she lifted up her voice and she wept. She's in a desert. Hot, dry, no support. Food is gone. Water is gone. But she's there with Ishmael. Can you see her? When I read this passage and I read this verse, I began to think of those mothers here in the United States and around the world who have been put out. Family put them out. Friends put them out. Society put them out. Even the church put them out. And now they're living out there in a place called life that is nothing but a dry, desolate desert. And they have that child or have those children. Amen. No hope, no help, 
no home out there because someone said, get out. Well, there's good news for Hagar this morning. And every, every mother who may find herself in Hagar's condition is right there in the text. And the first good news is this. Mother who is in misery, here's some good news for you. God is aware of your situation. God knows what you are going through. I, I, I know family and friends are nowhere around, but there's a God who sits high. And he's looking at you. Look at verse 17 of the text. It says, God heard the boy crying. And the angel of God called to Agar from heaven and said to her, what is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Amen. Because there's no food, no drink. It was hot. They were suffering. And you had two crying persons, this child and his mother. I want you to note something before we go further. Notice that the angel called her by her name, yeah. Hagar. Yeah, brother Pastor, what, what is the significance of that? I'm glad you asked. In chapter 16 and in chapter 21, Abraham... And Sarah mm -hmm. called Hagar slave girl. Mm -hmm. Never called her name. Which means that her identity, which means that her personhood, which means that her very existence was insignificant. The only thing she was there to do is to be a slave. Oh, but God looked at that slave girl and said, I just may not call your name, but I'm going to call your name because you are somebody. Amen. A few years ago, gospel artist Tasha Cobbs recorded a song. It goes like this. He knows. My name. <laughs> he knows my name. Oh, how he walks with me. Oh, how he talks with me. Oh, how he tells me I am his own. And so even though she was out there uh -huh. being called slave girl, being called handmaiden, being called servant, whatever they called her, God called her by her name. And God says, I heard the boy crying. Interestingly, the name Ishmael means God hears. So God did not only hear Hagar, he heard the boy. In other words, he manifested the boy's name. I want to tell some mother out there who's all by yourself. Everybody has walked away and you're the only one struggling to care for that child. You're the only one who is doing all you can. You're working every job you can, doing the best. You, I want to tell some mother out that God is aware Amen. of your situation. Amen. Right. And today he doesn't call you slave. Right. 
Today he doesn't call you what everybody else is calling you because of the circumstances of your pregnancy. Today he calls you by your name. Oh, society and church, we need to be careful how we treat young ladies who are out there in some, in some situations by no design of their own. Because remember, Hagar was a slave girl minding her own business. It was Mrs. Abraham who told her husband, go sleep with my slave. And now she's out there. No support. Nobody around her to help her or give her a word of encouragement. All she has is she is dealing with the elements of nature. God is aware. I know it feels like nobody cares or nobody knows. Let me tell you something. God knows. And if he is calling your name, know this today. He knows where you are. But not only is God aware of your situation. Uh Secondly, look at verse 18. Second thing is this. God will keep his promise. Look at verse 18. She said, lift the boy up. And take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought that was for Isaac. (laughs) Come on now, God. What what, what do you mean my son is going to be? I thought that was for Isaac. God said, baby girl, you don't understand. The blessing... It's on Abraham. Abraham's seed, because of my promise, will be multiplied. So it doesn't matter that you slept with him. What matters is my promise. Oh, you ought to be glad today that God keeps his promise and if he has made a promise to you mama you better take it for what it is the word of God some people have already reached conclusions about children about parents and oh he ain't gonna be nothing yeah, he, he just be whatever. Wait a minute. That's not what God told you. So you as a mother, take that child and know that whatever promise God has made, that it will come through. But that's what he did. For Ishmael, yes, yes, Isaac will be multiplied as well. But remember, the blessing was given to Abraham. The promise was made to Abraham. And look at what God said. God said, I'm going to keep my promise to Abraham that you will be the father of many, (laughs) many nations. There is a promise. In L, there's a promise in her. Amen. There's a promise in her Amen. that God has made yes. already made before she got here. Amen. And you believe that promise. Yes. If nothing else, that God will be in her life. Yes. God is aware of the situation. God will keep his promise. But third, look at verse 19. God will supply your every need. Remember, they're in the desert. One thing you would not find in the desert is what? Water. But look, if you will, at verse 90. Then God opened her eyes. And she saw 
a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy to drink. So in the midst of her desolation, in the midst of her, her misery, God says, listen, I created the desert. I created water. So since I'm in control of the nature of the, the substances in this world, I can put water in a dry land. Whatever your needs are today, God can supply it. And let me tell you something. You need to believe that because, you know, the devil will have you looking for your needs in all kinds of places. <laughs> He'll have you thinking that you don't have to do it the right way. All you need is, I just need to feed my child. And before you know it, you're in trouble and you're in the place where you did not plan to be. But listen here, God made a way in the desert. And if he can bring water to a dry land, I'm here to tell you that God can supply your need wherever you are. Don't worry about it. This boy probably would have died of thirst and dehydration. But God already saw ahead that they were going there. And he knew Hagar's misery. And he already made a way. Let me close with this fourth point, verse 20. God will give your child a future. Look at verse 20. God was with the boy as he grew up. He lived in the desert and became an archer. While he was living in the desert of Paran, his mother got a wife for him from Egypt. Wait a minute. Here's this boy who was under a bush suffering from thirst, about to die. His mother couldn't stand the sight of him dying, so she walked away and left him there for him to die. God made a way. Yes, sir. And now this passage closes with this boy becoming something other than just the son of a slave girl. He is an archer, bow and arrow. He can hunt. But not only that, he's living in the desert of Paran. But not only that, Mama went and got him a wife. And now they have a future. Don't talk about, I'm not going to talk about what Ishmael represent today in the world with the Arabs and all that stuff. I'm looking at what God did for them. And in the midst of her misery, God gave him a future. And I know sometimes you may want to give up because support is absent, because things are not there. Don't give up. Let God handle the situation. And let him give you the future he has determined. Look at how this narrative began. She got put out there with this child. No food, no support, no nothing. And it ends with the boy and Hagar still being alive. And, and, and living in the desert of Paran. My brothers and sisters, God is faithful. He keeps his promises. And I want to say to that mother who is here or who is watching, and you're in the midst 
of misery. You sleep with misery. You wake up with misery. You wake up asking the question, what am I going to do? I'm trying to take care of me, take care of my child, and there is no help. I got news for you. God will help you. I know I've got some witnesses in here. God will show mercy in the midst of your misery. All you have to do is trust me. Yes, I know sometimes you'll feel like you're out in the desert. Dry, desolate, dehydrated, you name it. You're out there. Nobody around. But God knows where you are. In fact, if you go back to uh, chapter 16 and read towards the end, you'll see where Hagar <laughs> gives God a name. And the name is, my God is a God who sees. And he doesn't just see some, he sees all. I just want to encourage that mother in misery, God sees you. God knows your name. And he knows all you are doing to take care of that child, those children. Knows all you're doing to do the right thing and stay on the right path. God will honor that as he did in the life of Haggai. So today, we are grateful for mercy in the midst of that mother with misery. And if that's where you are, trust God today. It's one thing to talk about them. It's one thing to talk about Hagar, call her everything who she is but it's something else to say Hagar I know <laughs> that these are not favorable circumstances but you'll be alright because God will take care of you I want to ask I want to ask if there's some mothers here today, who sometimes feel like Hagar. Let's be real. If you're here today and you feel like you've done all you know how to do, and it seems like you're not getting ahead, we want to pray with you today. We want to pray with you. And we want to assure you that no matter what, God will take care of you. He is aware of your situation. He'll make a way in the desert. He'll give a future to that child. But you have to trust him. Lean and depend on him. If you're here today without the saving knowledge of Jesus, let this be your day. And you can come and give your life to Jesus to be his servant. If you are here today, you are a Christian, but you don't have a church home. Why don't you come today and join God's church here at the West Hyattsville Baptist Church. If you're here today in need of prayer, this is your time to come and we will pray with you. You know that song? He knows my name. He knows my name. 
You can come if you want right now. He knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my name. Oh, how he walks with me. Oh, how he walks with me. Oh, how he talks with me. Oh, how he talks with me. Oh, how he lets me. Oh, how he tells me I am. I am his own. He walks with me. He knows my name. He knows my And he is calling it right now. Oh, he knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my name. Oh, how he walks with me. there's anyone else who hears God calling your name why don't you come come to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior come and join the West Highestville Baptist Church or if you're just in need of prayer come at this time Oh, how he walks with me. Oh, how he walks with me. Oh, how he talks with me. Oh, how he talks with me. And oh, how he tells me. Oh, how he tells me. I am his own. Mm -hmm. I am his own. Amen. And so now as we come into this moment, let the Lord lead you. Let the Lord guide you to come and get right with him. God will do it for you. God will do it. from Deacon Sire. Pastor, this is Adi Ronke for day and she has come up to join West Highville on her Christian experience. Yeah. I did? Can I call you that? <laughs> I've already cut her name short. <laughs> you would like to come and be a member of our church? God bless you for that. Yes. We are honored that God has led you Amen. to come here to West Highestville yes. Baptist Church. We are a church who are following God. We are following him each day because we know he has an assignment for us. And so as you come in, we ask you to come and let us embrace you, become a part of this fellowship. And whatever your gifts and abilities are, you can use them here as we work together for Jesus' kingdom. But we want to say to you, welcome. There will be a new member's orientation. The consigner will give you more information on that. And then you become fully involved in the ministry of our church. But for today, 
West Hyattsville, we say thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. Welcome to our fellowship. Have a seat. My little sister. I all call her my little sister. <laughs> She's come for prayer. What is your prayer request? That God will continue to order my steps as a single mother and that he will continue to cover my boys. Amen. Yeah. Let us pray. Father, we come bringing this mother to you. You just showed us the mercy you had upon a single mother named Hagar. A mother who was going through misery. And now God we bring this single mother of two boys before you. You know the needs in her life. You know the struggle, struggles that she's going through. We have seen how she has brought these boys to the church and how active they are in our church. And we know God, first of all, because of you. But God is also because you've given them a godly mother. Who even though she's single, she knows the right thing to do is to bring her children to you. So we ask you to give her strength. We ask you to bestow upon her your mercy. And then we pray, God, you will continue to lay your hands upon those boys that they will grow up in your favor. And that, God, they will always follow you. We know the world, oh God, is destroying our children in school, at play, in society. They're taking our children down. But God, her children, along with others in this church, are here because they want to follow you. So give her strength. Give her all that she needs. And always remind her, God, <laughs> you know her name. You know her name. No matter what people call her, you know her name. And you call her by her name and so when she's in those moments of despair call her name let her know that you are walking with her let her know that you are talking with her remind her that she belongs to you thank you for hearing our prayer and we thank you in advance for the answers you're going to give. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lorraine, be, be encouraged. God is with you. He sees all you're going through. He sees the sacrifices you have made and that you are making. And God will honor you. And he will bless you. Amen. Amen. Let's give God praise. We thank God today for this worship experience. We thank him for a new member he has added to our fellowship. We praise God every day. But whenever he brings someone new in, we give him the praise. Amen. Amen. Are there, I know this will be a large number today, but are there any first-time visitors? <laughs> any first-time visitors with us today? Please stand. Uh-huh. Amen. Uh, okay, you got that. Okay. All right, remain standing. Dick and Brown is coming around with the mic. You can tell us who you are. 
Tell us who invited you. Hi, I'm Ruel Wiles. My mom is Daphne. Um, I'm just here visiting from Denver, Colorado. Amen. Hi, I'm Ravina Martin. I'm here with my mom. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. um, hi, everyone. My name is Yvette Yancey, and I'm here with um, my cousin and her husband. Amen. Me. Amen. <laughs> Yvette. Amen. Adi, this is your first time here? Amen. What? First time, and she joined. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Bless God. Yes. Uh, my name is Aderunke. I am a family friend to the Dugaris. Oh. And they've been so wonderful to me. Hallelujah. So I'm glad to join the church. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Where's Tola? Yes, Tola. Where's uh, Ojo? Where are you? Hey, he is right there. Those are the Dungaris. They have brought a member, a friend, to join our church. And he just joined just a few days ago. Amen. Give God the glory, somebody. Amen. Amen. God is blessing our church, and for that we give him the glory. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us now prepare our hearts to bring back to God a portion of that which he has given to us. Let us bring our tithes and our offerings. And God has promised us in his word that when we bring our tithes and offerings into the storehouse, that he will bless us with so much blessings, we won't have room enough to receive it. Father, we thank you for this offering that is about to be given. We ask now that you bless it as it is given and pray it will be used in kingdom building. This is our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. Let us all say it together. Amen. Amen.
sounded good. Amen. Amen. I know we're preparing now to leave as we go to bless our mothers everywhere and let them know that we love them. Anna, come on and uh, as, we, as we close. And after she gives her poem, we'll do the benediction. And <laughs> you know, we have, we have two resident poets. And maybe more. <laughs> Amen. Anna Presley yes, and Michael Tan. Resident poets. Okay. So she'll give us a poem and then we'll do the benediction and then we'll leave. This poem is very appropriate for Mother's Day. Amen. It's titled Mama. I'm going to stand out here because I got to project a little bit. Mama didn't steal. Mama didn't lie. Mama didn't do drugs. So why should I? Mama kept our house so clean and neat. Mama made all my food, and I had plenty to eat. Yeah. Mama took me to church, and at night we prayed. Mama, because of you, I am who I am today. Yeah. Mama didn't bring us down or cause us any shame. That's why when I call you Mama, you are worthy of that name. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I did. You see what you've joined. <laughs> Amen. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's a beautiful poem. Mothers, go out and enjoy this day. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. May God give you a one, not only today, but in days to come. May God shower all his bountiful blessings upon you. We love you, Mama. We love you. And mamas who are going on before, we love you too. We honor and cherish your memory. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us stand. Mercy. For mothers in misery. God is aware of your situation. God will keep his promise. God will supply your every need. And God will give your child a future. Father, we ask now that you will have mercy on those mothers who are on this Mother's Day going through. Give them your mercy. Give them your grace. Give them your love. And as we celebrate the goodness that you've done to other mothers, we lift them up to you also. Thank you for this worship experience. Thank you for what we have felt, what we have heard. And now, God, as we leave this place, help us to go forth and let the world know that we're serving a true and living God. Bless Ade who has joined us. Bless her life, her family. And pray, God, that she will grow to be your child here in our church. Be with Lorraine and her boys. And pray, God, you bless that entire family. And have your way in her lives. We love you today. We praise you. We glorify your name. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in our hearts from now and henceforth and forevermore. Let us all say it together. Amen. Amen. Have a good week, everybody. We'll see you next Sunday. Happy Mother's Day.